All right, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I design keyboards specifically for hand-wired builds, but the concepts I'm gonna talk about today apply to really any keyboard. So if you wanna get the case cnc and then get the plate laser cut, you can do that because the dimensions are really the same. The only difference being that I hand-wire mine and that if you didn't hand-wire it, you'd have a PCB in there. Um, but with that said, before we actually talk about the tools I use, we have to go over some of the actual standard concepts when it comes to spacing between the keys and stabilizers and stuff like that. You don't actually have to know all this stuff because the tools will pretty much do it for you but it's useful to know when you actually get to the designing phase of the board in CAD so that if something does come up, you know how to actually space stuff properly without relying on a tool. Now you've probably heard often when looking at keycap sets, how many units a key takes up. And there is an actual number that is related to that and it is 19.05 millimeters. So one unit equals 19.05. What's cool about that is that if you say wanted to find how much a 1.5 U key is, all you'd have to do is take 19.05, multiply it by 1.5, that's how much space a 1.5 U key is. Now, what this is basically is it's actually 18 millimeters for the key, so it gets a little confusing here, but it's actually 18 millimeters for the key with about one millimeter of padding around it just to allow for deviations between different keycap sets. But by following these rules, you won't ever really collide with any other keys. The other thing you need to know about plates is actually how much space will a key switch be allowed when clicking into the plate. And it's basically 14 millimeters. You make a 14 millimeter square hole in the actual plate, the switch will click right in, simple enough. The final thing I wanted to talk about while we're talking about plates is stabilizers. And basically any key under 2U, you're not gonna need a stabilizer. But once you hit 2U, you're gonna need a stabilizer. And obviously for a 2U key, you're gonna use a 2U stabilizer. But you will also use a 2U stabilizer for 2.25, 2.5, and 2.75U keys. Whereas a 3U key will use a 3U stabilizer, which is a little bit more rare. And then once you get to your standard size spacebar, 6.25 and 7U, those are gonna use their own size stabilizers. So basically you need to know like four stabilizer sizes and you'll pretty much have every plate you wanna design covered. First, I wanna turn our attention to the keyboard layout editor tool. And it's very self-explanatory with everything it does, so I'm not gonna like explain every setting in here, but what we're gonna do is just build a simple 11 key macro number pad thing to give you a general idea of how the tool works. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna just delete the boilerplate they put in here, and I'm gonna simply add three keys, and you'll note that I click off and that no longer is red, and that will cause it to go to the next line, so I'll add three more keys, I'll do it again for the rest. And now this next key, I want to be a 2U stabilized key. So I'm gonna add a key, and I want you to take note that you can make this a 6.25U, you can make this whatever you want as a stabilized key, you can place this anywhere, and the other tool we use, this one, will actually take that into account. But we're gonna just simply make this a 2U, so I'm gonna come down where it says with, with that key selected. I'm gonna just type in two, and then we're gonna click off again, add another key, you see it puts it down below, and we're gonna use our arrow keys to move this over. So at this point, we have our little plate design we want, and all I'm gonna do is come over to the raw data tab, and you're basically just gonna copy this. But at this point, I would suggest actually coming up to the top right, downloading the JSON and saving it because this tool won't save it if you refresh the page. But what I'm gonna do is just copy this and then we can go to our next tool. Now let's turn our attention to the Swill KB Plate and Case Builder tool. All you're gonna do is take that JSON you just copied, paste it into here, and then look at these two options here. The other options are if you're like getting your plate manufactured and they request something specific like line weight or line color. Um, but we're not gonna talk about that here because we're talking more about 3D printed stuff. But yet again, this will work with laser cut plates. Um, having said that, what we're gonna look at first is the switch type, which what it selects by default is the MXT3, which basically has these cutouts on the edges where you can open the switch without desoldering it. I don't like that for 3D printed plates because the tolerances can be a little annoying. So what I typically do is MX or MX plus Alps. I wouldn't suggest just doing Alps because if you're designing a board for Alps, you might as well make it compatible with MX and Alps anyway. Um, this might be a problem if you're like getting them laser cut or for 3D printed boards, I always do MX plus Alps or just MX. Um, the next thing would be the stabilizer type, Cherry plus CoStar is the default. I would change it to Cherry only. This will work with PCB and plate mount stabilizers. And that's basically it. All you do at this point is you click draw my CAD. It will draw this file and you have three different options to download it. We want the DXF and you can pull that into your CAD program. So here we are inside of Shaper 3D and all we have here is the DXF file pulled into the program. And what I like to do when I'm designing a board is I like to start with the screw points for the actual mounts. 
And really, I can't tell you exactly where these go because it's gonna be dependent entirely on your build. But typically for something like this, and I'm talking more in specifics of 3D printed stuff, these will of course change if you're doing like something with metal. But what I like to do is kind of go in between these switches in like the four corners. So like you can see there's the switches in the four corners here. Um, and then those would be screw holes. And then I also like to do with the stabilized keys, I like to come halfway between the bottom of the switches and this switch. So like right here would be another screw hole. Um, I'll also sometimes do them on the edges depending on what board I'm building. If I'm using like a 6.25U stabilizer, I'll put them there. Um, but for this one, I think these five little spots would be perfect. So I'm gonna quickly add those little screw holes. So now you can see that I added two circles for each screw hole. And basically the dimensions of these is that the internal screw is two millimeters. And that is for the actual shaft of the screw to go through. But then this secondary position out here, this secondary circle is 3.6 millimeters and that's for the actual head of the screw. I use M2 screws for all my builds um, so that way I can countersink it into the case, which I'll show you when we get to that in a moment. Um, but with that said, what I wanna talk about now actually, and this is very specific to 3D printed plates. Um, this won't matter so much for a laser cut plate because you're gonna typically just be doing those as 1.5 millimeter. But for 3D printed plates, I like to actually design them as three millimeters thick. Now that becomes a problem because I use plate mount stabilizers, which are only supporting 1.5 millimeter plates. So in order to counteract that where they will actually still click in, I have to actually design a box around the stabilized point. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just quickly do that. Now that I have this box around my stabilized key, all I wanna do now is I wanna actually extrude everything out to three millimeters for 3D printing. Remember, a standard plate is 1.5 millimeters, but I 3D print, so three millimeters gives a little bit more strength. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just select everything here, including these outer screw holes. And all I'm gonna do is extrude this up to three millimeters like so. And then I can come back down and I can actually select that box I made and pull this down to 1.5 millimeters so it will allow my plate mount stabilizers to actually click into that. Now, with that said, that's the entire plate actually designed. That's, that's all there is to it. Now, when it comes to the case, it's actually fairly simple in order to get the spacing proper. And all we're looking at here is our plate sketch. And what we wanna do is just select the outer edge of the plate. We'll deselect these inner edges here. And basically the spacing that I found works for 3D printed boards is one millimeter between the edge of the case and the beginning of the plate. So we're just gonna offset this by a single millimeter. And that basically is where your case will begin. So from this point, what we can do is actually select this edge and pull it out five millimeters because I like to make my walls of my case five millimeters. Um, of course, if you wanna change that, you can do whatever you want with this point, but I'm just gonna pull that out to five millimeters like so. And that is the beginning sketch for our case. So this is essentially where our case will be is this, this blue part you see here. Um, with that said, what we gotta do now is actually extrude the bottom and countersink the screws. So now at this point, what we can do is we can actually begin to extrude our bottom of our case and get everything ready to actually build the full case from. So what we have to do is I like to do my bottom of the case is three millimeters thick because I like to countersink my screws 1.5 millimeters. So that gives it a decent amount of countersink to actual like shaft length for the actual screw to go through. Um, with that said, I'm just gonna select everything here after selecting my extrude tool. And I'm just going to extrude the bottom of this case up three millimeters, just like so. And then I'm gonna click done. I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna actually put these holes right through the bottom of the case because these are where the screws are gonna go through. So I'm just gonna pull them all the way down. And then of course I have these for the countersink where I'm just gonna select those. I'm gonna pull these right down to 1.5 millimeters just like so. So that is the bottom of our case and you can see that those are countersunk now. Uh, remember this is 3.6 millimeters here. You can see in the bottom of my screen, um, 3.6 millimeters and then two millimeters inside. Um, but with that said, what we're gonna do now is actually get the walls of the case built. So that the bottom of the case is done, all we have to do now is actually build the case walls, which actually need to take into account how thick your plate is and how thick these switches are. Um, I'll pop up a diagram on the screen so you can kind of see this in clearer detail. But for my 3D printed hand wired boards, I basically just do 20.6 millimeters for the entire case height with 17 or so of that being for the actual switches inside. That's also including the bottom of the plate. Um, but with that said, I'm just gonna take this bottom here and I'm gonna actually project it onto the top so we can extrude it out. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up to 20.6 millimeters. 
So the whole thing will go up to 20.6. And that is basically our case design right there. Um, what I'm gonna also do here is show the plate. And you can see that's in the bottom because it's three millimeters thick. Uh, I'm simply gonna pull this up to three millimeters here. So that's on the bottom of the case now. And then I'm gonna pull this up to eight millimeters, which is the height of the standoffs I use. Um, this way you can get an idea of what the actual case looks like. So inside here, you can see that we have this wall from the bottom of the case to the top of the case, and it is 17.6 millimeters tall. That is that height because it takes into account the bottom of the switch below the plate, and then also the switch above the plate so that the keycaps are pretty much flush with the top of the case. Um, and then also there's enough room inside the case so that the switches aren't like cramming into the bottom. But with that said, hopefully this was clear. Um, let's, let's pop out and talk about this a little bit more now. Hopefully that last section wasn't too confusing. I tried to give you the overall concepts without like being too clear on exactly how to design this stuff because really it kind of comes down to you with what you want to design for your board. And I can't really tell you how to do that. So like if you're using a Pro Micro or a Pico or something, you're gonna have to kind of figure out the dimensions of that and design it around the board. Um, but with that said, I did want to mention here also that if you are 3D printing this stuff, you should have a fairly well calibrated printer because the tolerances are pretty close and you might have to sand stuff if not. Um, but hopefully with all that said, um, you are more comfortable with designing a board now and you see that it's really not that crazy complicated. It just involves a little bit of time and I'll see you next time.